Hi, and welcome to the Network Visualizations and Methods talk. My name is Yuri Lee, and I created the Networks module for the ML FinLab package. And I'm a third year computer science student at King's College London. Today, I'm gonna to be going through some network methods in finance, why we analyze them to begin with, and how you can use the ML FinLab package to analyze these networks and some use cases around that. So typically um, the nodes in the network are quite straightforward. They're the stocks or bonds or any type of financial instrument, but the relationship between the nodes um, can be represented in various ways. The standard method of representing the relationship is say, given pricing data for both Microsoft and Apple of a given time period, you can calculate the log returns and then the correlation between the log returns and then the distance between the nodes. So the larger the distance, the less correlated the two um, log returns of the pricing will be. Um, but what we end up with is a complete graph. Um, and the more nodes we have, the more complex this graph will be. So we need a process of filtering out the crucial links to try to gain a deeper understanding of what is going on in the network. Um, one of the most common ways is minimum spanning tree. The minimum spanning tree is the minimum combination of edge weights where there are no loops and every node can um, reach every other node by some path. So I'm going to go to the Jupyter Notebook and show you how that works. Um, so first we can import the, first we can set the path and then import the um, libraries and the ML FinLab visualizations, the method generate MST server. And then I can import a log return data frame and just slice it so we have a smaller sample. Um, and then we can just call this method to generate the MST visualization. So calling generate MSC server, it needs a data frame of log returns. And then for the Jupyter notebook, we pass in a param Jupyter equals true. And then we call server.run server mode is inline. So I'll just show you how that works. So yeah. If you call mode inline, it's just going to show the um, MSC within the Jupyter notebook. Um, and you can see the MST and the links, you can kind of like interact with the different nodes, um, play around with the different formats as well. Um, and then there are just some summary statistics on the graph. Um, and you can control for like decimal places, but it's for by default, um, just for visibility purposes. Um, and then what you can also do is represent the sector groups of these nodes. Um, so it's commonly known like that the MST usually represent the underlying hierarchical structure of the network. So what we can do is define the categories or the sector groups of the individual stocks. Um, and I'll just show you how that works first. So essentially we call generate MST server, but we pass the param colors equals sector groups. Oops, oh yeah, run that first. Yeah, so now you can see the color code and the sectors. Um, and this gets more interesting as you kind of have a bigger pool of stocks because the different branches tend to group off with the industry groups, but not always. Um, and then we can also, on top of this, add the sizes of the nodes 
representing the market cap. But obviously you can put in any values that you like. Um, so yeah, you can see kind of like visual representation of big cap and small cap. And then, oh, so another thing that you can do as well for bigger sample sizes, when you have say more than a hundred notes is to use Prem's algorithm instead of Kruskal's. You just pass an MSC algorithm is prim and it's critical by default, but it shouldn't um, have much impact for smaller sample sizes. So if we go back, um, so using this tool, we can explore say the impacts of COVID-19 by splitting time period um, of some given stocks of pre-decline, decline, and post-decline recovery. So we'll go back to the notebook. Um, so yeah, I import the log returns and then I take out some small cap stocks and split them into three different periods. Um, and then define the sector groups. And what we can do is server, MST server um, and pass in, let's start off with pre decline. True, and then the colors groups. So the dot run server. to do this yeah we forgot to run this so yeah if you if you pass in some um some of the industry groups but not all it will still work but just highlights the ones that you've inputted so for the pre-decline mst we can look at for example how the groups are like forming together on different branches so city group is like a central node connecting the different kind of, this is energy, technology, a mixed group, and basic materials, financials. Um, and you can see that like these two nodes from the financial sector kind of branch off, including Morgan Stanley as well, branch off city group. Um, and interestingly, Twitter is, I mean, Facebook is, um, connected to Alibaba at this stage. Um, and what we can look for in the MST, this is a really important statistic, is the normalized tree length. So normalized tree length is essentially the average edge weight of the MST. Um, and it represents, so it's correlated with returns and it's negatively correlated with risk. So let's look at the decline period. So from the decline period, the normalized tree length more than halves or just about halves. Um, and then the financials become kind of like backbone of the MST connecting the different branches. Interestingly, during the decline period, Facebook becomes a central stock, um, having gone from one connection to six degrees. Um, and let's look at the post decline recovery period. So if we look at normalized tree length, it increases from the decline, but doesn't increase um, to the pre-decline levels, suggesting that the minimum span of tree has shrunk as is expected during crisis. Um, and then another interesting thing is Citigroup becomes another, like again, 
a connecting kind of central node. Um, and then JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley, they continue to kind of be also a connecting node between the branches um, instead of branching off just Citigroup on its own. Um, and then Facebook goes back to not being a central node, interestingly. And you can kind of like analyze it and play with the different inputs as an example. Um, and then we can, yeah, so as I was saying, the normalized tree length of an MSG is perhaps one of the most important things to look out for since it's positively correlated with returns and negatively correlated with risk. Um, the general observation about the changes in the MST through the periods is that the COVID crisis has shrunk the MST and the distances between the nodes in the same category decrease, um, which implies that the shocks have become increasingly correlated after the decline, although the prices have recovered to pre-decline levels. Another method to filter out the crucial links is the planar maximally filtered graph. Um, and the PMFG is a planar graph, so no edges can cross when drawn on a flat surface, where the edges connecting the most similar elements are added first. And the good thing about the PMFG is that it retains more information about the network than the MST, but retains the MST as a subgraph. So the green edges represent the MST edges, and then um, the blue edges are non-MST edges. So these are the steps to construct an M a PMFG, um, where you add the highest similarity edges first if the resulting graph is planar until three n minus two edges have been added. So why do we look at PMFG? And this applies to MST as well. Um, because the PMFG describes the underlying um, hierarchical structure of the network. So in the case of 34 US interest rates, um, ASI and others found that um, the nodes or the interest rates group together by maturity date. And for stocks, this would group together, for example, by sector group. Um, and now we can look at a case study using PMFG and how we can use it to kind of make investment decisions. So Polly Dimetto and Asti conclude that it's better to invest in the peripheries of the PMFG. So for example, perhaps here would be peripheries and then these ones would be kind of central nodes. Um, um, so the case study focuses on simulating two investment portfolios, a portfolio consisting of peripheral and stocks and portfolio consisting of central stock of the PMFG. So the question I wanted to um, explore was, had you invested right before the dramatic drop around here, how would the two, two portfolios compare um, throughout until kind of end of that, I mean, end of September. So what we can do is first select the portfolios. So we make the imports and then import the closing prices this time um, and split, I mean, slice the data frame for the predefined period. So we're selecting purely based on that period. Um, calculate the log returns and the distance matrix. Um, and based on the distance matrix, we can rank these nodes by a centrality ranking. So Posi, Di Matteo and Asti use a hybrid measure, but they state that um, um, the profile nodes will consistently perform better for all centrality measures. So I created a variation on that using NetworkX library to create a ranking of the nodes. So first we can import the function and generate central profile ranking. And then we have to create the PMFG object. 
So the PMFG object will take in a distance matrix and output um, an object containing the planar maximally filtered graph. Um, now we can extract the PMFG graph which will return like the network X PMFG object. Um, graph. Um, now that we've got the network X graph of PMFG, um, we can give that as an input to this method. So create route. <coughs> generate central peripheral ranking and this will take in the, the network X PMFG graph and we can have a look so the lower the rank the more peripheral the nodes and then the higher the rank the more central the nodes um, and we can slice the top 10 and bottom 10 just to simulate the peripheral versus the central portfolios. Um, and we can display that on a graph. We just specify the colors as the lowest rank peripheral and the highest rank central. So now we can create the PMFG server. So generate PMFG server. And then input the log returns. So in this case, this would be the pre-decline log returns. And of course, Jupyter equals true because we're running it in the Jupyter notebook. And then the colors. And then we can just call run server again mode is let's run it externally this time. Oh, oh it's probably because I've spelt it slightly wrong. Um, yeah, so we take this URL, just runs it locally instead of inside the cell. Um, this is probably better for like bigger graphs since there's more space to look at the graph. So, for example, if you look at the color code at the end, highest rank central nodes are like kind of purplish color. So you can see this one has a lot of connections, whereas a peripheral node has three connections with other nodes. Um, let's have a look at other ones. Yeah, similarly with this one and this one. And then you can see like, the peripheral ones, again, has three connections. Um, this one is visibly a central node, but um, because it's quite hard to see the MSD from this graph, uh, we can have a look at that as well and see how the peripheral versus um, central nodes look. So again, um, you can see the central nodes are usually the ones that connect the different branches, whereas the peripheral nodes tend to be towards the end of the graph. Um, so now we can do an analysis of the performances, but since I've done that, I can just summarize for you what happened. Um, we can compare for factors like volatility and this is the peripheral stocks portfolio the orange line here you see throughout the entire period the volatility is lower than the central stock portfolio um and the chart ratio is interesting because at the beginning um more or less the central stock portfolio and the peripheral stocks portfolio are very similar but towards the end, they diverge. Um, and the cumulative returns 
is kind of the one that tells you the most information about what happened. So the peripheral stocks drops 0.8% less than the central stocks. Um, and after kind of mid-June period, it also recovers much quicker. So at this point, it's around 90 something percent, and this one is around 70 something percent, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so 90.7 percent of the original value, whereas the central stocks recover to 76 percent of the original value. So um, the conclusion is that in line with the work of Positive Matea and Asti, um, you see that the peripheral stocks are less risky, they recover more swiftly and are more, more robust in times of crisis. Um, and you can use this to kind of do, for example, um, I don't know, long the peripheral stocks, whereas you can short the um, central stocks. And that is it for today. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.